Hi, it's Chris. Welcome to my first video of the Backyard Astrocyne series. In this series, we want to draw some empirical findings out of the data we collect in our backyard using just our amateur equipment. So, Mercury transited the Sun's disk in November the 11th, and I was lucky enough to capture this event. The clouds just parted, and I took some IV files from that little black dot in front of the Sun's bright disk. That was fantastic. When I read some wiki pages before, and I stumbled across this unusual orbital precession of Mercury. Back these days, just before Einstein, people were eager to find some planet, they called it Vulcan, inside Mercury's orbit. This unknown planet disturbs Mercury's orbit, so was the reasoning. It turned out that Einstein was able to clear things up by just using his theory of relativity instead of Newtonian gravity. His predictions of Mercury's orbit fit the data just perfectly, but that's another story. So I asked myself, they look for transits, in this case of planet Vulcan, and then figure out the orbit just by that data? Is that possible? So here's my game. In such cases I normally shut down the PC, take pen and paper and a good cup of coffee, and then I start the game. Can I figure out how they did it, or even do this just by myself? I mean, it, it's a game of mental fitness training, much like Zodoku stuff, and it goes like this. What do we want to get, and what do we want to know? We want to calculate the orbit of Mercury. That means for us the distance to the Sun, say, the radius of its orbit, and we call it Rm. So, what do we have? We have different images of Mercury, taken at different but known times, t1, t2, etc. We have my optical setup, meaning my telescope, and everything that I can calculate from this. And we assume we know everything else, like the Sun's mass, the radius of Earth's orbit, that's fair. They knew this property back then, too. So, what can we generate from this? We can use the images to measure the traveled pixels between two images, and we call it, I don't know, delta pixel. Uh, to measure this, I simply aligned the images by hand and went into GIMP and estimated the central point of Mercury in every image, and then I copied that coordinates into LibreCalc. And so we have the coordinates of every Mercury transit frame, and we can use them to calculate the distance in pixels traveled between each image. And I then plotted it, because I plot everything, and then calculated the average pixel movement per minute value. That was like 6.1886 pixels per minute, and then we saved that. So Mercury traveled 6.1886 pixels per minute on our sensor. And then I did something to get a, let's say, a feeling for an error in the system. Uh, so I plotted the plane coordinates of Mercury in the image. If I aligned the image, it's quite good. I did by hand, then that should give me something like a straight line. And this is what I got. Quite okay-ish, if you ask me, considering that I aligned the images roughly by hand with nearly no reference points at hand. Okay. Then what? We can calculate something else. We use any field of view calculator online to calculate our um, field of view. Wow. Yeah, but as a bonus, we get the arc seconds per pixel, and that's what we want. In our case, it's 1.03 arc seconds per pixel using my Skywatcher at 750 mm focal length and my ZWOSI 120MC slash S color camera. So, uh, 1.03 arc seconds gives us uh, 0.01716 arc minutes per pixel, divided just by 60, and then 60 arc minutes are 1 degree, so we get 0.000277 degree per pixel, and we save that. So, in summary, we know that Mercury moved 0.000277 degree per pixel, and we know the average pixel movement per time, that was 6.1886 pixels per minute. And we can conclude the speed of Mercury just by that? No. See, this is a triangle. Earth is here, Mercury is over here and moving up here, and the Sun is over there. We know this angle, we know delta time, that's one minute, but we don't know the distance Earth-Mercury. So we can't conclude the speed, which would be this length d divided by the time delta t. If Mercury was that close, it would be slow. 
if it was this far away, it would be faster. So one variable is open and we need to fix that. So let's put this as an equation. Velocity v equals d divided by delta t. Just how far and which time. And so, given that triangle, we know from school, tangens alpha equals d divided by distance earth mercury. Let's, I don't know, call this l. So then d equals tangens alpha times l. And so our equation is now velocity v equals tangens alpha times l divided by delta t. And as we don't want to find out the distance l, that was earth mercury, but the distance sun mercury, say, the distance l can be written as the distance sun earth minus the distance sun mercury. So we know the first one, sun earth is 149 times 10 to the power of 9 meters. And we are left with the second one, rm, the radius of Mercury's orbit, and that's what we are searching for. But still, we can't conclude the velocity just from that, so we still need a second side of this equation. Hopefully something with the velocity, so that we can cancel it out and only the distance is left. Okay, we do know from Newton that every body on a certain orbit has a given speed just depending on the orbit's radius. We remember, or ask Wikipedia, for the orbital velocity, the speed of an object in an orbit around a central mass. And it turns out to be velocity equals the root of g times mass of the central body divided by the orbital radius of that object. Okay, okay. g is the gravitational constant with 6.6743 times 10 to the power of minus 11 meters cubed divided by kilogram times second squared. The mass of the sun, as the central body is 1.9884 times 10 to the power of 30 kilogram. What a number. And the radius rm is exactly what we are looking for. Now, the reasoning goes like that. We observe Mercury with that triangle having a speed depending only on the distance rm. And we want to know the radius rm where this velocity matches exactly the, let's say, legal velocity of that orbit given by Newton. So mathematically we just said velocity 1 equals velocity 2 and in this case we set both terms equal. And then asked for the radius rm where this is legit, okay? So where has Mercury the same observed velocity than it should have on Newton's mechanics? So what we can do is ask a computer algebra system and enter every variable and constant of both sides of the equation, ask it to solve it to rm, in other words, give us the radius for where the speeds are the same, and then we get no solution. What? What happened, if we plot these two functions, is they don't intercept. Ever. But why that? We made assumptions. So Mercury actually travels a circle around the Sun. This triangle assumes a straight line. And within our calculations we round values. So for every distance rm our triangle function gives us a speed that will never match exactly the Newton function. So what will we do? We estimate. What is the closest these two functions will get? For getting the answer we calculate the distance function, say f distance equals f2 minus f1. And by calculating the derivative of fd and setting that to zero, yes, school math strikes again. We calculate the radius rm where the speeds are closest. And that value turns out to be 5.101 times 10 to the power of 10 meters. And of course, we open Wikipedia for further infos, and here is 5.7909 times 10 to the power of 10 meters. And I say, we call it a strike. 5.101 versus 5.791 is awful close to me. I mean, look, just for a perspective, this is a solar system at scale, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. So Mercury's true orbit is here, and our calculated orbit is here. Think about that. All we did is to look for Mercury for only one hour, then hand align the images, hand picking coordinates, reason well and calculate the best fitting orbit, and there you go, well close within. So as a scientist we think about possible errors. A. The assumption that Mercury travels a straight line. 
second, we ignore the movement of the Earth. See, we um, we set Mercury on a circular orbit. It's definitely not. Um, D, we hand aligned the images. E, we only have 24 measurement points, so... But after all, we're so close, it stuns me. Because we just calculated the orbit of Mercury by just watching it crossing the Sun's disk for slightly over an hour. And that's it. That's how you can do it. I mean, I personally assume that you can use this method for other objects like asteroids too, but A, the orbits need to be quite circular, that's not often the case, and B, you have to incorporate the, let's say, direction of observation. We came around this because Mercury was in a line with Sun and Earth in this case, so let me know in the comments if you did something like this. I'd like to hear some amazing stories. So remember, we can actually do science from our backyard, even if it's just for the sake of us, even if it's just training the brain, that's cool too. <laughs> See, we just calculated the orbit of Mercury just by reasoning, cool, huh? And if you like this reasoning and this video, hit like and subscribe. And more importantly, spread this hobby of astronomy. And if you know other interested minds, point them here. So, now and then, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.